This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's written that every time that we're coming to learn Torah, we should prepare ourselves to receive the Torah like that we were ready and excited, thrilled, honored to receive the Torah in that amazing day of receiving the Holy Tablets and the complete Torah in Mount Sinai. And every time that you come and learn Torah, it's the Creator that is speaking to you through that righteous man that is delivering the message that been given to us thousands of years ago. Now there can be thousands of people sitting and hearing the same lecture and not everyone will receive the same wisdom. It all depends on the vessel. It's written in the days of redemption that the wisdom and the knowledge will cover the world and the people like the, the water covering the sea. And we know that even though that the sea looks flat from the top, you have places in the sea close to the shore that are very shallow and low, and you have places that are so deep that even people today don't know the depth and the treasures that are hidden over there in those places. So also in the future to come, when we will receive the wisdom and the knowledge and we will experience and see the Creator who is going to reveal His face to us, even though that it will be seen that everyone know Him and everyone recognize Him and everyone going to believe in Him. Yes, it, it will be just like that. Everyone going to know Him, everyone going to call Him in His name, but the wisdom that will take place in the hearts of the people won't be equal. It will be depend in the preparation of our hearts. How much that we prepared ourselves to that amazing day, to the redemption day. And we need to expect Mashiach to come every moment. And we need to expect the Creator of the world, of the universe, to reveal His face to us every moment of our lives. In every second the Creator can uncover himself, can show His face, can shine to us, to remove all the curtains and all the walls and all the darkness and to reveal His loving kindness, His endless love, love that not depends on anything and just to show us His greatness, His kindness, His love. In one moment it can take place in our life. And the amount that we will receive in that moment will be depend in the preparation of our hearts. So how you prepare your heart? How can we prepare ourselves to that amazing day of redemption? To that moment that the Creator will reveal Himself, will come back to us. Going to show to us how much He loves us, how much He cares about us, how much He was hoping and waiting for that day to come. How are we going to prepare ourselves to that moment, to that honorable time that the Creator, the Master of the Universe, the King of all Kings, the Almighty, the One that is above nature, that doesn't have no limitations and no borders, that is above time and above nature, that He will show to us that He was always with us. How are we going to prepare ourselves for that day? The answer is I like to see your faces. <laughs> I really like to see your faces when you're thirsty. Hoy kol tzamelech ulemayim. Everyone that is thirsty needs to drink water. Water that you can bring out buckets on buckets from the well that you have inside your own soul. You want to connect yourself to the Creator. You want to prepare yourself to that divine meeting with the Master of the Universe. The way to do it, it's to connect yourself to the roots of your own soul. 
It's to find the point of spirituality that lives inside of you. To find your spiritual root. To find the truth that lives inside your heart. The point of light that is shining inside your heart. Your hope. Your dreams. Your holy desire for unity, for peace, for love. To connect yourself to your truth. To that hope that you carry within. That is the way to prepare yourself to that day that the Creator will reveal Himself like that He revealed Himself. And more than that. In that amazing day of Mount Sinai. Because in the day of redemption the righteous people will say. When they gonna look at the face of the Creator. They are all gonna point at Him with their holy fingers. And they gonna say. Ze Hashem kivinu lo. That is Hashem that we were hoping for Him. That is a sentence of a person that knows that person that he sees in front of his eyes. When they're going to see Him, they're going to recognize that that is that one that we were worshipping and serving and hoping for, for all of those years on years. Where they saw Him. We're talking about people that are going to be 70, going to be 90, going to be 120. They won't going to be younger. They won't going to be from the earliest generations, from 3,000 years ago from Mount Sinai. We're talking about people in our generation. How can they say, Ze Hashem Kivinulo, that is Hashem that you were hoping for if they never saw Him? Because when you have a solid faith, when you have an inner understanding of who that you believe in, so you can see Him even when your eyes are closed. Even when you cannot learn Torah, you desire Hashem. Even when you cannot pray in a minion or to go to synagogue and to pray, your heart is going out toward the Creator. Even when you cannot do as much as you wish to, as much as you want to, as much as you hope to, your heart is always flaming and hoping and desiring to catch more and to find more. And why? Because that you know something that someone else doesn't know. What do you know? You know that the Creator lives inside of you. You know that from your earliest days, from your early childhood, the Creator was walking with you. Was walking in the camp with you. Was giving you His hand. He helped you not to drown. He helped you not to fall. He helped you when you were crying. He helped you when you failed. He helped you with your parents. He helped you without your parents. He helped you in school. He helped you to find your shidduch. He helped you to find his your first job. He helped you to learn Torah. To recognize Him. To find Him. How did I do tshuva? How in the world I started doing tshuva? I grew up in a secular house. We never celebrated the holidays. We were not keeping Shabbat. We were not eating kosher. It, worse than you can imagine. But suddenly, in the middle of my life, I realized that something spiritual is going on here. That there are too many coincidences in my life that doesn't make no sense. And I was not ignoring that inner voice that was calling me from within. Search for me. Look for me. Hey, what was that? <coughs> that curiosity that lived inside of me that was pushing me to seek for the truth, to find it, to ask for it, to demand it, to claim for it. Like I was the owner of that truth. Like it was belonged to me and I was asking for it with all of my heart. That passion, that flame of fire that lived inside of me from my childhood already. After seeing movies, Hollywood movies, I would be so inspired. I really believed that I can fly. As a child, I believed in those things. When I saw Star Wars, I, I was sure that I have force. I was true. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I know it, I knew it. I didn't have the slightest doubt that I can move things with my mind. I knew it. I didn't have a doubt. As a child, it was obvious. <laughs> I see it my children. For them, it's obvious as well. I have a son. He's, you can see him. Like that. We're not Haredi. No. We're not. 
we're breathing. We're trying to find the Creator in our lives. And the Creator, He takes place in our lives. The Creator is communicating with you. He's sending you messages and signs and you know it. Because you saw those signs. Because you were experiencing spiritual experiences in your life even when you were not learning Torah. Even if you were sitting in prison. I have a student that found me in prison. He was in prison sitting in his cell in the worst darkness of his life. And someone just gave him a booklet over there in prison. And he started doing tshuva. And he became a different person. And you have thousands of stories like those. You have people that found the Creator in the wildest parties under the effect of chemicals and drugs in the Far East and suddenly they realized there is Hashem, there is a Creator, I must serve Him. How in the world it happened? If not that the Creator is taking care of you from the first days of your life and revealing His love to you on daily basis, providing the right food, the uh, supportive environment, the right books are coming to your table in the right time, certain phone calls that are taking place in the right moment, messages and Whatsapps and Facebook, and Hashem is using all social media and all power of universe to bring you back to Him, and you know it. <coughs> Because you found Hashem through television, and you found Hashem through the cinemas, and you found Him in the theater, and you found Him in the sea, in the beach, and you found Him when you were driving in Shabbos, and you were finding the Creator while being under the effect of drugs and alcohol, and still the Creator was communicating with you. So you can recognize the Creator in your life. And that will be the one that will reveal Himself to all of us in the Redemption Day. And you will recognize that one that you know from your childhood. The same one that pro pro were protecting you when you were a child. The same one that was helping you when you were in trouble. The same one that helped you to escape and to hide. The same one that was escorting you and protecting you and showing His unbelievable love to you from the first days of your life. That is the Creator. In Him you need to believe. You need to believe in the Creator that you believe in Him. Listen to my words. You need to believe in the same Creator that you believe that He is the Creator. Now, if another Rabbi will come here and going to try to brainwash you and to explain to you who the Creator is, you don't need to follow that advice. You don't need to believe in my Creator or in the way that I'm describing the Creator. You need to believe in your Father in Heaven. You need to find Hashem, and Hashem is with you. I came here to give you a speech, to give a lecture. I'm going to spend one hour, two hours with you. That's it. But you are going to go back into your life after this lecture. It can be an amazing lecture. It can be so inspiring. But you're going to have to take something from this class and to use it in your life. Now when you're listening to my lecture, you don't need to follow me and to listen to me. You need to listen to your inner voice. What is waking up in your own hearts right now? Who is talking to you right now from within? Are my words relate to you to something that you went through in your life? If yes, if it's positive, if it's good, if it's giving you strength and power and happiness and more hope, take it. If it's rejecting you and closing you and terrifying you, reject it. Don't take it. Refuse to learn from a person that is blocking you and closing you. You need to connect yourself to the source of truth. Where can you find the truth? Within. Emet its pnimiut. It's the inside of your soul. All of this world created in a way that there is an external side 
external aspect of life, an outside world, and an inner world. To connect yourself to the truth, it's to connect yourself to the inner part of the creation. Your inner part is inside your heart. Your heart is telling you all of the time, ask for my face, the Creator is telling you. The Creator is using your heart 24 hours a day as a microphone, as a speaker, to tell you, look for me, ask for me, try to find me. That is the message of your heart to you. So, to you, he gonna speak in your language. Gonna use the concepts that are familiar for you. That you're gonna understand his message. And with me, he gonna speak in a different way. He gonna communicate with me in the way that I'm gonna understand. And if we are different, so we're gonna hear different voices. We're gonna have different feelings about the Creator. But all of those feelings are coming to bring us to the same place, to the place of honesty, to the place of dignity, to the place of generosity and kindness and patience and good attributes. That's the will of the Creator, to bring you to find your true self, to find your inner connection to infinity. And you can do it by listening to your own voice. Just to open yourself to your soul, to your heart, to accept yourself, to listen to your thoughts, not to ignore your emotions, to give some credit to your senses, to understand that the Creator made you in a certain shape, with certain qualities and powers that you should use. He gave you those qualities, those talents, those abilities, those way of thinking and remembering and, and, and remembering smells and sounds and voices and situations and places and everyone are different. But He gave you yours with a purpose, for a reason that you gonna rethink about everything and you gonna come back to that understanding that the Creator was with you from the first days of your life. And He's with you also today. Sometimes He's shining, sometimes He's hiding. Sometimes He's opening, sometimes He's closing. But He's always with you. Loving and caring and protecting and defending and supporting and building <coughs> you. <coughs> protecting you from your fears. Protecting you from your own shames. Protecting you from your own weaknesses and lackings. Building you against your selfish will, against your pride, against your sadness and your depression and your anxieties. Supporting you and revealing to you that He is with you. You need to follow your inner voice. You must listen to your thoughts. To be open to your emotions. If you have a bad feeling about something, don't go there. If you know that something is wrong, that something is bent, that something is crooked, that something is wrong and evil and not right, don't go there. Don't do that. Because the Creator is warning you. The Creator is sending certain messages to you and is trying to protect you. And if you're going to ignore your inner voices, those are the speakers of the Creator to warn you, to communicate with you, you're going to miss the message. You're going to lose the connection. And you're going to find yourself in that meeting losing. And making mistakes. And then need to pay and to fix. And to reset your life again. Because you were not loyal to yourself. To be loyal to yourself, it's to be loyal to the Creator. The Creator, He loves you and He created you and He gave you tools and gave you wisdom and gave you power. The exact tools that you need to succeed in life, those are the tools that the Creator gave you. He knows your path. He knows your way. 
He knows exactly who are the people that you need to meet with in your life. He knows exactly what are the challenges that your soul need to go through. He knows exactly what is required for you to accomplish completion, to find the truth, to complete your faith and your trust in Him. He knows exactly who are the people that you need to confront with, who are the people that you need to protect yourself from. He knows exactly. And He gave you the tools and the power and the sensitivity and the nose, the senses to feel and to sense and to think and to prepare. So if you're going to ignore who that He made you to be, you're just going to lose in every round, in every game. You're just going to lose. And you see yourself circling and coming again to the same situations over and over. Same argument, same fight. What's going on? The Creator is telling you, you are not being loyal to yourself. That's why you need to make the same circle again. Because you were not yourself while circling. If you would be yourself, you're going to continue to the next stage. If you're going to be honorable and loyal and truthful, you're just going to be yourself. You will be able to climb to the next step. But as long as you were not yourself, you were not passing the test. You were not completing your mission. But when you are there, you're completing. Even if you think that you're failing, if you failed with pride, if you failed with honor, if you were able to admit, I was wrong, and to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem from your failures with a happy heart and a wishing soul, with a desire to learn, with the humility to admit in your lackings, with the power of your nefesh, with of your spirit to say, I was wrong, I messed up, I was weak, I failed, I'm sorry. You're going to gain and you're going to achieve even more than you could have achieved without failing. Because the level of a person that is coming back to Hashem in Tshuva is even greater and higher than the level of a complete righteous man that never failed in his life. King David, by his failure and his ability to stand and to admit, I was wrong, I failed, he opened by his power he opened for us that opportunity to come back to Hashem from our individual weaknesses and failures. He became to be a role model for all of us to know how we can also come back to Hashem. Modeh ve'ozev Yerucham To admit and to draw your old patterns, your bad habits, your bad midot, and to be able to admit and to say I was wrong. It was a mistake. How hard it was for me to start keeping Shabbat. I came to my father. I was 21 years old. I told him, my father, I think I want to start keeping Shabbat. My father looked at me and he told me, don't make a joke out of yourself. And turned his back and went away. <clears throat> When I said to my mother that I want to do tshuva, she said, I'd rather you to be gay and not religious. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to reality. Okay, thank you. When you want the truth, you're going to have to deal with the truth. I have a friend that suffered from poverty for many, many years. And one day he came to me and he told me, I don't know what's going on. Why I need to suffer so much? I told him, listen, there is only one reason for your sorrow. That your prayer has been accepted. That's the reason that you suffer. You asked for the truth, right? You were standing one night on your porch, looking at the stars, and you, unfortunately, was truthful enough to say to Hashem Barach, Hadricheni Ba'amitecha, Lead me in the path of truth. I want to know you, the Creator. I don't want to lie to myself anymore. Unfortunately, Hashem heard your prayer. <laughs> and He accepted it. And now, it's a done deal. You shake the hand of the Creator in that request. And you're in a problem. You're now going to have to clean yourself. And you messed up big time. There is much to clean. 
You're going to have to understand how far you are before you will be able to come closer. I want to be close to you. Okay, you need to take a very strong shower, a very clean shower. Something that really going to clean you up. You really want to be close to me? If your prayer was a prayer of truth, and Hashem accepted that prayer, that's where it finished. When you said to Hashem, I want to be close to you, and you meant it, from that moment and on, you just found yourself in that process of cleaning, up and down, in that washing machine, up and down, running in circles, one time hot water, one time cold water, with soap, with, uh, with, with, with the softeners, with everything that is needed for you to come clean in the end of that process. Thousands of up and down, circling, walking in rounds and rounds and rounds, getting dizzy. What's going on, Ribbon Oh, here I'm climbing, and then I'm going down again. And here I'm climbing finally, and then I'm going down again. Waking up at 5 a.m., running to shul, after mikveh, putting filin, and Rabbeinu Tam, and learning dafayomi. And in the next day, oh, Ribbon <laughs> Shalom. How am I finding myself in those filthy places again and again? And yesterday it was so clear. There is a Creator. He's supporting me. He's building me. I can see it clearly now. Now I can see. He's supplying all of my needs. He can feed me in the desert. I have so much trust in Him. I will never gonna drop my faith. And when the first of the next month is coming, phone calls. All of the lawyers in the world are going to know you. All of the doctors are going to know you. You're going to shake like a terrified baby, like a deer that lost his mother. Don't have a clue how to deal with your life. Calling and begging your parents, your friends, your best friends, your friends of your friends. Everyone will be under your list of phone calls. Why? Because you lost your faith. Why you lost your faith? Last month it was so clear, the sun was shining in the east, you could have seen the Creator face to face. What happened? The Creator wanted to remind you that your faith is not that solid yet. It's true, you saw Him, but not because you're an angel. Not because you're so righteous. Just because that He revealed His loving kindness on you. He brought up the sun last month. Not you were so tall that you can see the sun from every location. He revealed His loving kindness on you, His unconditional love. Even that you were not worthy last month, He shown His love to you. And now this month that you thought that you're so worthy, He needs to remind you again that everything that you receive, you receive as a free gift. Not because He's cheap, not because you're not worthy, you're never going to be worthy. You don't need to be worthy. The meaning of the word mercy is to help with charity to someone that is not worthy. We're not claiming to be worthy. We're asking for mercy. You don't need to be righteous that the Creator will love you. You should just be one of His creations. Like that He revealed His unconditional love even on the Egyptian soldiers that were running and chasing our nation in the desert to kill them for no reason. And the Creator could not stand their sorrow. He couldn't hear the angel praising Him on punishing and drowning those Egyptian soldiers in the Red Sea. He couldn't hear those angels praising Him on killing His own creations. He was rebuking the angels and telling them, are you praising me right now when my creations are drowning in the sea? The Creator feels the sorrow even on the most cruelest creations that are drowning in the sea because that they are being stopped and punished on their horrific sins. But the Creator, His love is an unconditional love on all of His creations. And who is that Creator that we're talking about? He is the same one that you believed in Him in your early childhood. Before you were learning Mishnayot, before you were learning Mara, before you knew how to hold the Siddur book, before you daven Shmonaisre, before you were saying the Tehillim, before you heard so many lectures, before of all of those amazing days, 
you still had faith. You have a, had an innocent faith. That is the real faith. The simple faith. The understanding that you have someone that loves you. Someone that wishes to hug you. Someone that wants to give you as much as you need. That is the Creator. That is the one that we need to serve. We're not allowed to serve our fears. If there are people that are terrorizing you, that are breaking your, your spirit, that are trying to force you into their path, to guide you in bent ways that are twisting the simplicity of your innocent faith, you're not allowed to follow their advice. You must follow the advice of the righteous ones. You must follow the advice that you hear from within, from the bottom of your heart. That light that is shining from the roots of your soul, from within, and calling you over and over, don't give up. There is hope. Your prayers are being accepted. Your prayers will be answered. I'm with you. I love you. That is the Creator that we should worship and admire and love. Him and no one else. We're not allowed to serve out of fear. Lotaguru mipnei ish. You're not allowed to be afraid of no one. The name of the Creator, one of His holiest names is love, is Ahava. Asher Shmo Ahava, that His name is love. He is the loving kindness. He is the endless sea of generosity. He is the sea of bounty. He is the sea of beauty and grace. He is the source of life. He is the source of good. He is the endless source of wisdom and patience and sensitivity. He loves you. So love Him back. Connect yourself to Him through your heart. Connect yourself to the one that you believe that really exists. Not the one that someone told you that He is in charge of your life, that He is going to punish you, that He is going to do this to you. I'm not doing that. I will never going to worship someone that is threatening me to kill me. To destroy me. I'm not doing it not for the reward and not for the world to come and not to succeed and for sure not to be punished. Who cares about all of those punishments? We are a generation that already lost so much. Even if you have parents, you're in the aspect of an orphan. Even if you have a community, you're a lost sheep. Even if you have a rabbi, your rabbi might be even loster than you. You don't know. People are struggling. People are suffering. People are going through such hard times and difficulties in their lifetime. People are barely surviving on the minimum, on the basics, on breathing, on having decent relationships, on getting married, on renting houses. Who is talking about buying properties? Just breathing, just surviving, just saying shakon yabit and not being confused if it's an etz or an adama. What should I bless on it? What should I do right now? Wash my hands like in the morning, like to the bread. How should I do it? What should I do? Losing our mind. We're after a holocaust. We're after thousands of years of exile. We must understand it. It's our reality. We are coming back to ourselves from the war, from the fire. We are wounded. We are broken. We are not clean. We are not in the best shape anymore. And the Creator, He knows that. And He wants our heart. He wants our intention. He wants the purity of your heart. He wants you to be honest. That's the only thing that He wants from you. Honesty. Try. Be the best you can. 
You have a wife that she refused to hear. You have a husband that cannot talk with you about religion at all. Not an option. You have children that accept of their computer. They can't see anything. Now what you gonna do? You're lost, right? Okay. So why do you think that someone will complain on you for losing the way? Let's check your house. Let's check your parents. Were they the best role model for you to know exactly how to build your house? Or that it was a miracle that you made it until here? Even until here? I never been educated on how to have peace in my house. My parents, very nice people. They were not the right teachers for that how to supply Panasa, how to bring money to the house. My father did the best that he could. I cannot learn from him, sorry. My reality is totally different than his. How to learn Torah, for sure, no one taught me. How to pray, no one ever sat with me and taught me right. So now, how can it be that someone gonna complain on me and gonna blame me on not knowing things that I never been taught? And even if I've been taught, I have different tests in my life, different t challenges in my life, things that are obstacles that are piling and piling in my days, certain situations that I need to deal with them on a daily basis that are occupying my mind and distracting my thoughts from the main way of serving the Creator in the right way, in the holy, holy way, things that are holding me back so hard that I'm innocent. Even without knowing, even without succeeding, even while failing. If you're going to ask a person, why did you fail? Check yourself. What was the reason for your last failure? If you're really going to be strong enough to check yourself, but in an honest way, you're going to find yourself innocent on the worst failure of them all. Your conclusion going to be, I was just looking for love. I just wanted to be happy. I was so lost. I was so afraid. I didn't know what to do. That's going to be your answer. And the Creator, He knows that. You know why? Because He cares about the heart. Not like people that are being judgmental and hard on you and criticizing you. And they have so much things, so many things to tell you. The Creator is not like that. He's looking at you with one eye of mercy. One eye of kindness is checking you and searching you and observing on you and looking at you. The Creator is telling us that He's not looking at our sins at all. When you're going to complete your tshuva, you know who doing tshuva? Frightening, huh? Hashem is telling us, Shuvu elai v'ashuva elechem. When you're going to come back to me, I'm going to come back to you. Until now, we said that he was always with us. So why do you need to come back? From where he needs to come back? Because he exiled us. There is no parent in the world that will excommunicated his child, will exile his child and won't feel regret on that. Even if it was the most justified action in the world, even if that punishment was the most right thing to be done, the Creator feels so bad about it. And the Gemara, the Talmud, and the Midrashim, Tana de Bieliyahu, the verses, all of the Siddhars, all of the prayers of Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur are revealing to us the regret of the Creator. That He is saying to us, Oy Nishbati, I regret on the fact that I made that oath to exile my children and my so-called wife, the Shekhinah Akdosha, from my house. But now, I don't have no one to cancel that decree that I decreed. 
There is no one except of one person. One righteous man, Mashiach Tzidkenu, will come to him and gonna tell him, listen, the Creator, I respect you. You took that decision. You exiled your children. But now you lost them. Look what happened to them. Do you regret? And the Creator will say, Amen. He will say, Yes. He will say, I do. I regret. Like that He said. Like that the Creator already revealed to us in His holy verses. Malo le'av she'eglait banav. The father that exiled his children doesn't have nothing else in his life. He lost everything. And Tana de Beliau, Elijah the prophet, is telling us, comparing the Creator to a chicken that is coming to an intersection, that in that intersection she lost her children, and every year she's coming back to that intersection to look for her chicks, to look for her babies. And the Creator is crying, and He regrets, and He feels the sorrow of the exile, and He is inside of our own hearts suffering with us. Pain, pain that cannot be described in words, and His eyes are tearing. And those tears going down and drops into the ocean, into the large sea. And He sits and waits. When are they going to come back to me? For what? For what is sitting and waiting? That we're going to complete our tshuva? That we're going to come back to Him with a happy heart? That we're going to tell Him we believe in You, even though that You exiled us? We regret on our sins? We feel sorrow on the fact that we messed up big time? We regret now when we going to complete our tshuva? He will start His tshuva. He will come back to us. Like the nature of two people that are arguing with each other. One is rebuking his friend on insulting him, on hurting him, on sinning and doing something horrible to him. And when that friend wakes up and regret, the nature of that situation will be that his friend will forgive him. If he really going to apologize and going to say, I'm sorry, you were right, I regret, I was wrong, your friend going to forgive you on that, that's for sure. But what's going to happen if you're going to keep on asking for forgiveness? But listen, my friend, now that I realize that I hurt you so much, I feel so horrible about myself. I never meant to cause that trouble to you. I don't know what to do with myself. I feel horrible right now. How can I fix? What can I do? What's going to happen to your friend? After a while, he's going to start to feel bad with himself. He's going to start telling you, listen, it's okay. You didn't meant to do so bad. You didn't meant. You were weak. You were tired. Something happened. You were poor. You were terrified. Something happened. I, it's okay. I forgive you. If you're going to keep on apologizing, but no, don't forgive me. I must explain to you. It was the horrible mistake of my life. I never meant to do that. How are you going to feel, your friend? What are you going to feel about you? He's going to forgive you completely. And he's going to feel bad about himself on being so hard on you in the first place. He will tell you, no, please relax. Everything is okay. I wasn't supposed to be so hard on you. I'm apologizing. He's starting doing tshuva. Who? <clears throat> Who? Him. Father in heaven. The creator of the universe. When you're going to complete your tshuva, he will do his tshuva. He will come back to you. He will apologize to you. He will regret and will express his sorrow to us. And we all gonna cry together. And then we all gonna laugh together forever. That is judgment day and then redemption day. Judgment day is when we are judging ourselves. Redemption Day is when He is coming back to His place, to His holy house, 
in Mount Zion, in the holy city of Jerusalem, showing his unconditional love to all the nations, not only Jews. In that story, not only Jews are being redeemed. All the nations are coming and following the Creator, calling in His name, bowing to Him, worshipping Him, also doing tshuva on their mistakes, on their false faiths, and coming back to believe in Him in unity, with love and respect. Believe in who? Believe in the one that you believe in. Not even the one that someone described to you. Not in the one that someone told you that he's in charge and he's on top. In the one that you know, in the bottom of your heart, that is protecting you and walking with you from the first steps that you made on earth. You need to serve Him. You need to talk to Him. You need to communicate with Him. You need to be in touch with Him. You need to open your heart to Him in prayer and to speak with Him like you speak to your best friend in prayer, in the way of conversation, to communicate, to tell Him your heart, to ask for guidings, to ask for help. King David was not quoting Tehillim. He was not reading the verses. He was talking from the bottom of his heart. And he left the book of Tehillim for us to be inspired from. To learn from Him how to call the Creator when you're in the desert, when you're in the darkness, when you don't have food to eat, when you don't have peace in your house, when you're lost, when you're confused. That's the time to call Him and to talk about what? To say Shemunaisle? No. To say Tehillim? No. To talk to Him like that a child will speak to his parent. To tell him, I need your help. I'm kind of lost. I don't have an advice. I don't know what to do. Where is your love? Where is your mercy? Can you give me a hug? Can you show me your love? Can you please reveal your kindness on me? That is an honest prayer. That is a prayer that will be answered. A simple prayer that you're disconnected from, words that you don't understand, and you're just mumbling and reading, I'm not saying that it's not good. But that's not the highest level of prayer. The highest level of prayer is when you express your heart and shoot your prayers to the highest place of them all in your intention. That you aim your heart to the crown of the Creator, the one that you admire, the one that you know, the one that you believe in, to call Him from the bottom of your heart and to express your sorrow, your pain, your feelings, your emotions, your needs, is the highest level of them all. To hear the speech, if my mother is going to hear my speech today, she will be very proud, but she will be much more happy to hear me calling her and just talking a regular conversation. Hi, Ima, Manishma, Makore, Mamatsam. She's gonna like it much, much more. She's gonna love it much, much more than to hear me speaking in front of thousands of people. It won't be the same. She will be proud. She will be happy. She will be glad for me, for her maybe also. But really, her inner point of happiness will start shining when I'm going to call her and just going to ask her, Ma shlomech? Ma inyanim? Ma kore? In my language, in her language. That's the highest level of prayer, of communication that you can have with your parent in heaven. That you will speak with him like you speak to your best friend, to your parent that you love to someone that you can trust and tell him all your heart. And that will be the highest prayer that will be answered. Like that it's written, Karov Hashem lechol korav, lechol asher ikreu ve'emet. The Creator is close to everyone, to everyone that will call him with truth. So call him with truth, it's to call him from your heart.
It's to express your emotions, your needs, your thoughts, your fears, <coughs> and to try to overpower your fears, to try to climb above your weaknesses, to ask for guidance, to ask for help. And that help will come, because the prayer of an honest person, of a sincere person, is a prayer that's being answered. Thank you very much. May the Creator bless you and answer all of your prayers and requests and that bounty and health and holy wealth and happiness will come down from heaven to your houses, into your hearts, to the hearts and to the houses of all of your beloved ones. Amen. We have our children books here, another book that I wrote, and um, there are much more to do in the world, so please keep on following us. Our website, emuna.com, emuna with H in the end, and why we put an H in the end, that you're not going to forget Hashem. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video, and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.